Welcome back everyone, it's your coach Marwan 1 for Marwan Kilo Fitness and FitnessLeadDad.com. Today's video we're going to be talking about cardio, high intensity cardio and low intensity cardio which was better for you for fat loss. So if you listen to the bros in the gym and the experts who claim to be in the know, uh, in other words ITKs, they all say that high intensity cardio is better for you, low intensity cardio isn't so good, simply because it's boring as F. And, uh, the, and uh, it, it, it increases the cortisol uh, and therefore you start to lose muscle, you waste your muscle away. So which one is really true? Um, this video is not about whether which one is better for you, it's just to shed some light on whether um, on both types of cardio and I'll give you the conclusion at the end. So what I want you guys to do is make sure that you sign up for all the social media, Facebook, Instagram, whatever social media you're on and pay close attention, take some notes, because this is really important. So let's talk about high intensity cardio. Um, as you know, high intensity interval training is uh, whereby you do like intervals, and uh, you, you basically run, say for example, 30 seconds, you rest, <coughs> you rest for another 30 seconds, and so on, for the period of five, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it is that you want. Okay. So the whole idea behind this is that you burn more calories after the workout. Also the experts, the bros, in other words, the bros in the gym claim. Well, in kind of, uh, I hate to kind of dampen the spirit somewhat, but it's insignificant, the amount of calories that you're gonna burn after the workout because the excess post energy consumption or EPOC after burn or whatever you wanna call it, well, only consumes about six to fifteen percent of the total calories that you burn from the actual workout. All right. So if you burn four hundred calories, for example, you'll only burn up to sixty calories after the workout. So that's really insignificant because it's uh, a pound of fat is three and a half thousand calories. Okay. So another thing, the experts claim that. Um, What's the right thing? The experts claim that in order to burn, you kind of you're burning at a great overall calories because you're doing high intensity interval training. And that's great, and they kind of they are true in what they're saying, but that does not mean that you're actually burning a greater overall net calories, a greater amount of fat. You see, when you train for a high intensity interval training, you're training a different energy system. Okay, you're training your cardio, your um, your you're training your body to burn glycogen for energy, which means that all the stored energy in your muscles is simply getting used. Uh, you basically you're um, mobilizing energy, amino acids and carbs for energy rather than the fat stored. So the fats are getting stored, and all you're doing is mobilizing the stored energy in your muscles, the carbs itself. Okay, what you want is to be able to mobilize the fats and the carbs to be able to burn the greatest amount of fat. Now, if you are, so the experts will claim that if you are in an energy, or rather if you're burning a greater overall calories, even if it's from glycogen, then you're burning more fat, right? Overall fat, or rather overall calories. Well, that's not really true because the average human being is not the same. Okay, you and I that are not the same. The average human being is sedentary, is overstressed, and is very efficient at mobilizing glycogen for energy rather than fats. So this is somewhat kind of um, inaccurate to state that everybody is the same. All right, another thing that is claimed is that your heart rate is stays elevated after workout, which is a good thing, right? Heart rate elevated, it means you're burning more energy after the workout. Not so good. Do you really want your heart rate to be up after the workout? Not really. You might want it to be for a little bit, but not overly, uh, not want it to be high for a longer period of time, simply because that could mean, you, that basically means that essential nervous system fatigue, okay, through um, dopamine depletion, depletion and uh, uh, adrenal uh, adrenal fatigue okay so the adrenal fat, um, receptors will get desensitized with central nervous system pain uh, central nervous system fatigue so you're not able to um, you kind of you're getting re released a lot more cortisol and as you know cortisol is bad for fat burning 
because it basically mobilizes, starts to increase your blood sugar. Right, that's not really what you want. And eventually it breaks down the protein in your body uh, to use for energy. All right, so high intensity cardio has got its place, all right, but it's, um, it's really, it, it, it kind of only for a few people can do it with the enough intensity to get the maximum, the maximum amount of benefit from it. And when done properly, they're very, very hard on the nervous system. They're very, very good in that they're able to mobilize a lot more, a lot, um, mobilize a lot of fuel for energy, for example, the carbs. And also you are going to increase your insulin sensitivity, okay, and be able to mobilize, to increase the growth hormone and to be used as energy. But this should only be done around about twice a week and away from your workouts, okay? Uh, so if you are doing a workout in the morning, then I'll do your, your cardio about six to eight hours later in the evening, or simply do your cardio in the morning and do your workouts in the evening, or do it on a separate day. Don't do them together because A, you're not gonna have enough energy and to do it properly, and two, you're just gonna um, increase the, the uh, stress on the nervous system. All right, so um, what else are we gonna talk about? Let's talk about low intensity cardio. All right, so we start with low intensity cardio, on the contrary, does not, is not, should we say, does not um, increase more cortisol, does not produce more cortisol than HIIT cardio, okay, high intensity cardio. And the reason being is that you've got to be doing that, you've got to be doing it at a fast pace for a, a period of like two hours plus to be to release enough cortisol okay if you're only doing it for 30 40 minutes at a time and you are not exactly a marathon right so if you're only like running at say i don't know five kilometers 10 kilometers not even 10 kilometers an hour for like 30 to 40 minutes or even walking then you're not going to be releasing that much cardio, uh, cortisol and that's why you see people like the marathon runners who are kind of have no muscle and are skinny and versus the sprinters who have a lot more muscle simply because these guys, the, the marathon runners are running for up to two hours and maybe even more at very high speed, probably the same, uh, probably at the top, a, a kind of an average of about 22 to 24 kilometers an hour for two hours straight. That is, a, that is a very, very fast pace. Okay, whereas the sprinters do a maximum of like 10 seconds, 40 seconds to a minute of fast pace. Okay, so um, both types of cardio are very, very important. Okay, the reason that you should do both is because, and you should especially do low intensity cardio, is because you are going to be uh, mobilizing, you're going to be training your mitochondria to release a lot more, um, uh, to be able to, to burn fats for energy rather than just burning carbs. Okay, so both are kind of mutually uh, beneficial to each other. Both are good for you, okay, and use both for your um, for your fat loss goals instead of just one or the other. All right, you don't want to do just one. You want to do both because you don't want to teach your body to use um, to use um, only glycogen for energy. You want to teach it to burn fats for energy as well, and that's why low intensity cardio. It's very, very good. Not because it burns calories as such, okay, but it, re it teaches the mitochondria, uh, the body to actually release more fats for energy to be efficient at that. And you want to be efficient at releasing fats for energy as well as releasing carbs for energy when the system requires it, okay? You don't want to be just mutually good at one thing, especially when it comes to burning fat. All right, so uh, to recap, both are very good for you, okay? And um, only do high intensity cardio if you are efficient at burning fat, okay, for energy. And if you are fit enough to actually do intensity at very, very high intensity to get maximum benefit. All right, if you're gonna do high intensity cardio, then do them outside in the field. Don't do them on the treadmill because you are gonna end up injuring yourself somewhat. And plus, going outside, you're gonna be burning a lot more calories than you would do on the treadmill, simply because you have to push yourself harder. On the treadmill, the belt is pulling you, 
and it's an unnatural movement. Okay, you kind of if you're um, it makes you kind of it makes you take a natural step, and that puts a lot of pressure on the various joints and the various muscles in the body, as well as being like really really hard on the nervous system. Okay, so like I said, both are mutually beneficial for each other. Both are good for fat loss. Just make sure that you're doing both rather than doing one or the other. I don't tend to train with uh, cardio as such, running and stuff like this. I tend to use more functional stuff like the, uh, the prowler, sled, workouts, and also use um, the, um, the use tire tripping. All right, guys, so I hope this video was helpful. Um, leave me a comment and let me know uh, what you want me to do next. And if you found it helpful, then hit the like button. Share it with your friends, family, and whoever else you think is going to benefit. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.